Today, we are going to look at the strange story of the Republic of Rose Island, a micronation like no other. Introduction what you're looking at right now is a platform in the Adriatic Sea, which was built by Giorgio Rosa, a man who was described by his son as a very precise, detailed person and very organized, an engineer in an almost German sense of the word, except for this small vein of craziness that led him to want to build a platform for himself and then make it a state outside of territorial waters, which kind of made him the Prince of Anarchists. That small vein of craziness his son is referring to is the centerpiece of today's video. It took Giorgio Rosa about 10 years to finalize his plans for the construction of this 4300 square foot platform, which was supported by 9 pylons, about 8 miles off the coast of the ancient city of Rimini. Rimini is, and has been, one of the most notable seaside resorts in Europe. It is also only a 10 minute drive from the most serene Republic of San Marino, which might be where Giorgio got some inspiration from. In case you didn't know, San Marino is a landlocked microstate established in the 4th century. It's also a riveting story, but maybe for another time. The Republic before we continue, I would like to mention today's sponsor, which is still nobody, so smash that like button and share this video with the homies. The platform that was to be Rose Island was finished in 1967. Even though it was only 4300 square feet, there was enough space to fit a number of commercial establishments, like a restaurant, bar, nightclub, souvenir shop, and of course, a post office. At one point, the Republic released an official periodical newspaper dubbed the Osservatore Dominicano. With Rosa as self-proclaimed president, the platform platform declared independence on May 1st, 1968, under the Esperanto name Insulo de la Rosa. Rose Island, soon after, released a series of stamps, one of which depicted Rose Island's approximate location in the Adriatic Sea. The mill was the Republic's purported currency, and it appeared on early stamp issues, though no coins or banknotes are known to have been issued. On later stamp issues, this denomination was translated into Esperanto as Milo. Side note, Esperanto is a language that was created in 1887 with the sole purpose of being a universal second language for international communication. However, Big English came around and fricked everything up. Somehow, there are an estimated 2,000 native speakers and 30 to 180,000 second language speakers. Are you one of those elusive Esperantists? Don't hide your talents, show them off in the comments below. The platform, or island, however you want to see it, was designed to cater to the beautiful summer months that make this area of the Adriatic Sea one of the most desired destinations in the world. The first winter on the platform was less than ideal. The high waves and cold weather made it extremely hard to actually build the damn thing. Lest we forget, Giorgio had plans of adding an additional story to the platform every off-season. The whole thing was something of an engineering miracle, really. The building process was not easy, but the 10 years Giorgio spent designing it paid off immensely. It only took 5 people to build everything, over the span of a few months. The Republic of Rose Island platform quickly attracted the attention of Italian newspapers and against the backdrop of worldwide unrest with the Vietnam War and civil rights protests, young people flocked to Rose Island for fun and freedom. Plus, who doesn't want to go get drunk on an independent island? Sounds like fun. It was marvelous, but all good things come to an end. Really quickly sometimes. Backlash The Italian government quickly caught on to the freedom and shenanigans that Rose Island provided for anyone adventurous enough to visit it. More so, the government viewed it as a ploy to raise money from tourists while avoiding national taxation. Whether or not this was the real reason behind Rose's micronation, the Italian government's response was swift. By June 26th of its inaugural year, a group of four Carabinieri and Guardia di Finanza officers landed on the island and assumed control. The Republic's Council of Government is said to have sent a telegram, presumably to the Italian government, to protest the violation of its sovereignty and the injury inflicted on local tourism by the military occupation. Unsurprisingly, this was ignored. Later on, Giorgio Rosa bitterly declared this as the only war that Italy has ever won. 
It's worth mentioning that throughout its short-lived status, somewhere around 50 days, the Republic was never formally recognized by any country in the world. The pushback from the Italians was so severe that at one point it was suggested the island was a safe harbor for Russian spies and the water beneath was used to hide Russian submarines. Man, Italians really do have a way with stories. Before the drastic measures taken on June 26th, the government actually tried to pay off Giorgio to abandon the platform and go on his merry way. He of course refused, since to him this was about freedom, not money. Before you knew it, Giorgio was summoned to explain himself in front of different committees every day. He insisted that he had not broken any laws and that there was no reason for the occupation of the tiny island. The End On a breezy Thursday, February 13, 1969, the Italian Navy began the destruction of this micronation with the help of dynamite. Even though it was claimed that the structure is unstable and a danger to society, the Navy had to use three rounds of dynamite to submerge it. And it didn't even work, because they had to wait for a storm to clear the rest of the debris out. The act was later commemorated on postage stamps issued by Giorgio's self-declared government in exile. Sources on this are a bit murky, but it is claimed that the only casualty from the destruction of the platform was Rosa's dog. Which is really messed up, man! As all things, the internet has completely destroyed the traditional eccentric, anti-establishment mantle of micronations like the Republic of Rose Island, and instead has transformed them into LARPing Discord servers. I doubt we will witness any stories of people just wanting to have fun, man, in the future. Maybe after the Water Wars of 2034, but who knows. I hope you enjoyed this short summary of this incredible story. If you're interested in more, Netflix released a movie last December, but I think it's in Italian, so... Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.